Okay, Shalom, Yashorala, giving all praise and glory to the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hello, Yah, to his glorious and holy name. Uh, tonight I'm going to go into uh, guilt. Guilt, conviction, sin, all coinciding. And as always, I'm going to start with Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem, Mashiach Yahushai. Give me thanks to the Most High and the Father, by Hashem, Mashiach Yahushai. So all that we say and do is going to be in the name of the anointed Savior, Mashiach Yahushai. We give thanks to the Most High for everything. He's worthy to be praised for everything. And I looked at uh, guilt in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. And it says, uh, guilt. Is deserving of punishment because of the violation of a law or a breach of conduct. In the Old Testament law, the concept of guilt is largely ritualistic and legalistic. A person could be guilty as a result of unwitting sin. Right? So, I want to go in scriptures and uh, we can uh, examine this, you know. Guilt. Um, let's look at Leviticus, the fifth chapter, and the seventeenth verse. Leviticus five and seventeen. And if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to do. Excuse me, forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Most High. I mean, you breaking the commandments of the Most High. Though he wish it not, yet is he guilty and shall bear his iniquity. See? He shall bear his iniquity. And then it goes on to say, and he shall bring a ram without blemish out of the flock. With thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his ignorance, wherein he erred, and with it not, and it shall be forgiven him. It is a trespass offering. He have he have certainly trespassed against the Most High. Now, uh, these are sins that are done in ignorance and the verdict is not death. Some sins are, you put them to death, like I just did that lesson on adultery and fornication and, you know, and so forth. So, now we know that Amashiach Yavashai is that ultimate sacrifice for our sins. But we that are in this truth, we have no excuse. Because if you don't know, you can ask. Or you've already went over a lesson to show what's right from wrong. You know, you can go into my YouTube page, I know for sure, go going over the laws. Just type in going over the laws. And you can go over the laws to find out what's right from wrong. Or inquire before you do something that's wrong. There's no excuse for any of us. Look, Leviticus 4 and 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, Moses, saying, If a soul sin, shall sin through ignorance, not knowing, against any of the commandments of the Most High concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he have sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the most high for a sin offering. See? This is what we did. That's an ignorance though. 
That's said ignorance. You didn't know, you know? That's why now, as we're in this truth, and we're in the last days. You know, you, I always think, man, this could be the last time that I have to get it together, to do what's right, and follow what he say do. Or, the judgment could be you be cast into the lake of fire. Any of us, nobody's exempt from this. While we have to want to know what's right from wrong, or else. Look, look at uh, Hebrews 10, 25. It says, not, excuse me, 26. For if we sin willfully, we just read about if you did it ignorantly, but you sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, and understand this, we, we, we are people, we feel certain things as the Israelites. Go to, uh, hold that, get Romans 10 and 2. This is us. Romans 10 and 2. For I bear them record. Who's he talking about? Let's read verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the Most High is, for Israel is, so he's talking about the Israelites, that they might be saved. Right? That they might be saved. Who? The Israelites. Then he says, for I bear them, who is it them? The Israelites, record that they have a zeal of the Most High, they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. You see? That was zero the most high, but not according to knowledge. That's why when you get the knowledge, then you held more accountable than those that didn't get the knowledge. That's what I say. This is not something you can take lightly because the most high called you. Two of my shack, y'all was shy. He allowed my shack was shy to do the chosen, but all of us were called. Not necessarily chosen, but we were called. And now we gotta make sure that our calling is sure by doing what's right. Before the Most High, because his eyes ten thousand times brighter than the sun, recording all the things that we do. The book's gonna be open. This is gonna be like you did this, you did that, you did this. Ain't no ignorance no more. That's why he's saying, going back to Hebrews ten twenty five, not for sake. Excuse me, of twenty six. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is remained of no more sacrifice for sins. You hear that? When you know we got the zeal of the Most High. Just not according to that. You might have been able to go to the scripture. But you know you heard the scripture. Then you know right from wrong. That's talking about us that's in the truth. That's learning. Or if you don't, then you can always ask. You know, I was thinking about doing this. Or in secret sin, then you're not going to say nothing. But, say, I was thinking about doing this, but you, what do you think? You think it's, think it's right? Is that right or wrong? That's acceptable with the Most High. He's going to really, the angel going to be happy for that. But if we just do whatever we do on our own mind, then we fall into the devil. Wait. That's what he will have you to do. Just follow your own heart. That's what you're doing. You're following your own mind. So he says, for if we sin willfully, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. We know. We know. A whole lot of truth. Not just a little, a whole lot of truth, according to this word. His law, statutes, commandments. And Amash Shai showing us, coming here being an example to show us the truth. There remain of no more sacrifice for sins. He said, I ain't going to the most high behind you for, for your sins. But a certain fearful looking of, for, for of judgment. Now, people come in, they, they, like I said, revolving door. But that judgment, <laughs> I want these people really ready for that. You already say, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. We're going to be burning people up forever and ever and ever. Not just now. You can have your little consolation now. Some people have their consolation now. This is it. After this, it's the lake of fire. Which shall devour the adversary because you become the enemies of the Most High because you're not doing what he say do. You're either going to do what he say do or you're the enemy. Point blank. Either right or you're wrong. You're righteous or you're evil. Wicked. 
So, this is what we're looking at. Look at Numbers uh, 15 and 30. Because there's a difference in, uh, before you, yeah, let's go to Numbers 15 and 30 first. Since I went to uh, Hebrews 10, 26. And it says, in the law, Numbers 15 and 30. But the soul that doeth ought presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, this is what he's saying, when you understand him, and that's willingly, willfully. You know it's wrong, but you do it anyway. Whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproaches the most high. You hear that? When we do these things, we reproach us the most high. We disgrace the most high. And that soul shall be cut off from among his people. You hear that? That soul going to be cut off from among his people. Because he have despised the word of the most high. That's why you, got, you have to inquire. You either study, go in here, study yourself to see what's right from wrong, or you ask. Because he have despised the word of the most high and have broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. You see? So, what the Most High said in Acts 17 and 30. Because you can't really, uh, and it depends on what you've done. You know what I mean? It depends on what, what we've done and what it is that we feel guilty about. That's the question. So it says, Acts 17 and 30 says, In the times of this ignorance, the Most High winked that. You hear that? Time of ignorance, meaning you didn't know that you were doing something wrong. The Most High winked that. He winked at it. Okay. But, was the condition now commanded all men everywhere to repent. To repent. Listen to what he said after this. Meaning, ask for forgiveness of your sins. You see? Because he have appointed a day. It's a day. This day coming, y'all. In the which he will judge the world in righteousness. By who? By that man. He have ordained. Hamashiach Yahushai. Who's not coming back as a man. <laughs> he comes back in his angelic power. Whereof he have given assurance unto all men in that he have raised them from the dead. See, so this is what we're looking at. Really, really, you know, getting ourselves together because a lot of times you could be guilty, feeling guilt, and it's not it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary too. I went over scripture concerning that, um, which is very important that we uh, we see this because if you gotta sincerely repent. If you sincerely, sincerely have to be re re repenting, then most I, you know, he's he's what do you say, mercies. So many mercies beyond our imagination that he's given us throughout our lifetime. So we can't speak for him. And graces. But look, um, Ecclesiastes 30. And verse 21. It tells us this. It says, Give not over thy mind to heaviness. See, don't give your mind over to heaviness. See, what you got to understand is once you give it to Hamashiach Yavashai, Bahasham Hamashiach Yavashai, going to the Most High on our behalf, then you've given it to him. That's why it's saying, give not over thy mind to heaviness. Heaviness. You still dwell on the same thing. You don't believe. You don't have no faith. It comes down, comes down to your faith. Got to go into faith too. Because 
You've given it to the Most High. You've forgiven. You ask for forgiveness. And you still believe that you have not been forgiven. If you guilty, if you guilt, you walk around with a guilt complex. That's why he said, give not over thy mind to heaviness. And afflict not thine self with thine own counsel, with your own thinking. Now, you know we got to go with that one. Your own thinking, the way you think. That guilt is something else. Because it's the way you think. He so said, don't, don't, you can look. Ecclesiastes 3.24 But many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Own worthless thinking. The way you think. You can't believe in the Most High, have faith in the Most High. You go into Him for forgiveness and then you believe that He don't hear you. He don't believe you. He don't, he don't, he don't, you know, believe that you really repenting. It says, For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. And an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. So you rolling with Satan. You ain't rolling with the most high on my second shot. You rolling with Satan, with the devil. If you let this evil, the devil, that's his whole job, to deceive everybody. Have you fooled to be able to not follow what it is that is the comfort of the scriptures. When he said, Ecclesiastes 30 and 21. Give not over thy mind the way you think to heaviness. Allow your vain opinion to allow the devil to come in to deceive you to heaviness. And afflict not thyself in thine own counsel the way you think. The devil going to always get in your mind to try and deceive you. What is his whole job to do? What is his job to do? First Peter's. Five and eight. It's his whole job. That's what he's doing. Be sober. That's why you got to be focused. You got to be first and foremost focused and not no drunkard. Be vigilant because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom they devour. That's why you let your mind uh, operate with vain, worthless thinking. And not following what the Most High said his word. And the devil come in and make you make the wrong judgment. The devil get into people's people. So they get into people and you're dealing with the devil through somebody else. And they roll around cool. They all right. And your buddy end up getting jacked up. We end up getting jacked up. Behind listening to somebody that's got the devil with them, in them. And you know it. They ain't rolling the truth. So they roll, they're rolling as with, with the devil. So he said, what is his job to do? Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who may devour. That's his whole objective. And he gets in the people. Our, our people don't realize. This dude gets in the people and had them roll with the spirit of the devil and do what he wanted them to do and deceive somebody. That's why I say, whom resist their fast in the faith. But if you ain't got faith, you can't resist the devil. If you don't know the law, like a Masha Goshai, he always, he always came. And he always would come whenever you're at a weak stage. That shoulder to cry on. Come on, you know. You know, what's wrong with you, brother? Hey, they bat their eyes, women bat their eyes, seduce you. Let's see, you know, you caught up in their web. Or women. The dude coming at them, hey, whenever they at a weak stage. That's his whole job. To get into people to have them operate to deceive you. That's why you got to be strong in these last days. He said, who well, resist their fast in the faith. You believe in this, in the most high. That's what Masha Shai said. Hey, have faith in the most high. You know, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that, that are in the world. Everybody going through this. Even the Masha Shai, the son of the most high. Fasted 40 days and 40 nights. What happened? Here come the devil. Tempting him all the time. So we all subject to this. It's just a matter of how are you going to get around it. And not accept it. Going back to Ecclesiastes 30th chapter. 
Got to say it again. Verse 21. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. You can't sit around saying I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. If you ask for forgiveness, you believe in the most high, you got faith in the most high, you believe in him, then, and afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. Your own counsel is the way you think. Your own counsel is the way you think it in your mind. Hmm. The gladness of the heart is the life of man. You know, the gladness of the heart, the gladness of the mind is the life of man. And the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. So, if you all walking around guilty, sad, and and what was me, what was me, you're going to shorten your days. But if you happy, then your days can be long. Prolong the days. Love that own soul, yeah? Love your own self. But don't be conceited, thinking you all that. And comfort thy heart, comfort your mind. Remove sorrow far from thee, yeah? that? Move sorrow far from thee. That's why it's beautiful to see somebody smile and to see somebody happy because you know that that's helping them. It's going to help you too. That's why I say move, remove sorrow far from thee. For sorrow have killed many and there is no profit therein. Ain't no profit therein. you walking around. If you think about it, you walking around guilty, feeling guilt, then you're not going to be happy about it, are you? Unless you're just the devil yourself. So if you're sad about that, then that's that's going to shorten your days. Envy and wrath shorten the life. See that? Envy and wrath shorten the life. And carefulness bringeth age before the time. Meaning you technical. Just so you know, you you old and you young. You walking around an old person, but you still you young. But you walking around like an old person. Really old. Um, look at Joshua, the seventh chapter. Joshua, the seventh chapter. It's right after Deuteronomy. Joshua, the seventh chapter. Let's look at verse 10. And the Most High said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? He said, Get up. Why are you lying on your face? He says, Israel has sinned. We as Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, broken my laws. For they have even taken of the accursed thing. Wicked Israelites. They have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and disassembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. So it's even among their own stuff. The things that are, that both sides say are cursed. Israel put it right among themselves. Hiding amongst their stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. We couldn't stand before our enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies. Had to run. Because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. You see? You see, I ain't going to be with you no more unless you destroy the accursed thing that they had from among them. Um, look at... Um, um, Joshua, the sixth chapter. Look at this accursed thing. Um, verse 16 And it came to pass Joshua 6.16 And it came to pass at the seventh time 
when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout! Joshua the one that brought us out of wilderness. I mean, out of uh yeah, out of the wilderness into uh the land of Canaan. Him and um Caleb. Only two men. Out of six hundred thousand. That's the most high who we serve. Joshua said unto the people, Shout! For the most I have given you the city. Say shout. For the most I have given you the city. And the city shall be accursed. Even it. And all that are therein. Hear that? So the city is accursed. And everything that's in there. That city is accursed. To the most high. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. Remember because she helped. Uh, the men. That was spying out the land. Told the men that was looking at them to go that way. And she told the men that was spying out the land to go that way. Only Rahab, the harlot, shall live. She and all that are with her in the house. Because she hid the messengers that we sent. See that? And ye. And any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing. It's commandment. And ye, Israelites, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. Say, so, hey, don't take of the accursed thing because you're going to make all of us suffer behind what you're doing. Everybody's going to be in trouble. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Most High. They shall come into the treasury of the Most High. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him. And they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city. Jericho. You know the story. But man and woman. Both man and woman. Young and old. And ox and sheep and ass. With the edge of the sword. So. So now, as we were seeing in Joshua 7, they messed up. Verse 11, Joshua 7. Israel have sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the cursed thing, and have also stolen, and disassembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. See. That show you that. Most I know what's going on. You know. You see what's happening. But see. People act like. The most I can't see them. Because. You know. It's. Things that. We do. And not realizing Ecclesiastes 23 and 19. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men and knoweth not that the eyes of the Most High are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. He see everything that's done in secret. That you think is in secret, he see everything. He knew all things I ever, ever they were created. So also after they were perfected, he looked upon them all, looked upon everything, he see everything. And everything that we do is being put in the books. And it's like, okay, well, uh, if it's uh, to the point where you're so guilty that you feel that 
You're not worthy. That's why I went to Acts 17 and 30. The time of your ignorance, the most I winked at. But require all men to repent. We all have to come out of this. I mean, who would I sin? You know, we all have to repent. All the time. We have to repent. We we sin with our thoughts. What we think. We all have to repent. So it's not something that you can look at, okay, well, because it tells you it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of living power. Especially, especially if he's laboring to make us perfect. He said, let the multitude perish then in, in uh, 2 Ezra 9, 22. He said, but let my plant and my, my grape and my plant be kept for with great labor have I made it perfect. So if he's laboring to make us perfect and we just say, oh, forget you most high and say, oh, I ain't got to deal with it. I ain't going to deal with it. I ain't going to deal with you. Then that's like saying, hey, you're going to fight with the most high. That's like getting to fight with the most high. I don't think we're ready for that. So, we took it a curse thing. So, verse 12 of Joshua, the seventh chapter. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Hear that? Because they were accursed. Neither were, and understand this <laughs> the whole plight is for. The devil to remain in power with those that are wicked and evil with him. So, if you think the devil going to outplay the most high in the Mashiach, you got another thing coming. Because that's his whole plight right now. This is his last chance. His last stance. And you're going to get as many as he can get. We know two-thirds of our people ain't going to make it nowhere. And a lot of the other nations not going to make it. He said, because they were accursed, neither will I be with you anymore. That's serious. For the most I say, I ain't with you. And I'm giving you to your enemies. And I'm going to give you to those that hate you. And to an unjust king. And to the most wicked in all the world. He told us this. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen. And they're going to rule over us. He said, I will be with you. I won't be with you anymore. Except you destroy the accursed from among you. Up, sanctify the people. Clean them up and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. But thus say the most high power of Israel. There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou cannot stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. Hear what he said? You got to take away this accursed thing from among us. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, all twelve tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the most high taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the most high shall take shall come by households, the whole household, every last one in the family. And the household which the most high shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Most High, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. See? So, this is what the Most High ordained. This how it went down for this particular, you know, guilty party. So guilty parties, I might say. They had to be burnt. Look at uh, Luke the 12th chapter. Because there's certain degrees of being guilty, you know. Luke the 12th chapter um, Let's look at um, Let's go through the uh, 
Let's look at Luke 12. Let's start at verse 41. It says, Then Peter said unto him, Master, speaketh thou this parable unto us, or even to all? It says, This parable you just spoke is to us or to everybody. And the master said, Who then is that faithful and wise servant? Steward, excuse me. Who then is that faithful and wise steward? Faithful first. You believe in the Most High. Wholeheartedly. And wise because you had a wisdom. Whom his master shall make ruler over his household. To give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed that servant. Whom his master when he cometh shall find so doing. You still operate in this truth. Of a truth. Speaking of truth. I say unto you. That he will make him ruler over all that he has. You want power from authority. <clears throat> but, and if that servant say, in his heart or in his mind, my master delay of his coming. And this happened before. And shall begin to beat the men's servants and the maid servants <coughs> and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The master of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. But you come like a thief at a night. And at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder, cut him up to pieces and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers See, we got to believe, we got to have faith. Like I told you, coming back to faith. <clears throat> believe it in the most high. Believe in something that's not apparently there for you to see. <coughs> Listen, and that servant, which knew his master's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. You see that? That's why I say when you come to serve the Most High, please ask because two and one. When you come to serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation. For the tempter, for Satan, for the devil. And you can't just keep on thinking that, well, I'm new to this. I'm, no, we're not new. Much is given, much is required. This is what it says. And that servant which knew his master's will... You knew what's right from wrong and prepared not himself. You prepare yourself in learning the laws that's come out of the most high, moral laws, civil laws, dietary laws, ceremonial laws, having faith in the most high, fearing the most high, you know, shall be beaten with many stripes. You can't avoid this. You say you're going to be beaten with many stripes. You know what's right. And there's no excuse for us because we have too many sources to be able to ask what's right from wrong. So you're going to be beat with many stripes. But he that knew not those that have been called into this truth, that the devil got into their minds and they seduce you in any way, shape, or form to do something that's unrighteous. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. Hear that? Because he ain't called him. He'll be beaten with few stripes. Just the highest calling you can be called. There ain't nothing more powerful than this truth. What is? I challenge you to comment on that but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes for unto whomsoever much is given and much has been given of him shall be much required you know when we have taken the time to go over these scriptures hours upon hours upon hours much has been given, and much is required. And to whom men shall have committed much, of him they will ask the more. That's right. So, you say, I have come to send fire on the earth. He's coming back to send fire on the earth. And what will I, if it be already kindled? <laughs> I'm coming to send fire, and what am I going to do 
if I come back and it's already the fire, they already put the fire out there, and I'm not able to do what I'm going to do, what he's going to do, and bring in that fire. He's going to burn this bad boy up. Speaking of that, look, let's, let's look at a little bit of that. Go to, uh, uh, Second Peter's three and ten. Second Peter's three and ten. But the day of the master of Mashiach that was shy will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements, the atoms, the protons, the neutrons shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up you come with fire saying then that all these things shall be dissolved what matter of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and righteousness gotta have gotta be talking about these scriptures gotta be talking about something pertaining to your salvation Looking for and hasting until the coming of the day of the Most High, while Mashiach was shy, wherein the heavens being on fire. This is heaven right here on this earth. And there's going to be a galactical battle in the sky. Fire. The purifying element that the Most High is going to use to purify this earth. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You hear that? Elements go melt, go melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, he promised we the Israelites, look for new heavens and a new earth where it dwelleth righteousness. Yes. So I just wanted to bring that in. So that's that should be encouraging for you. Knowing that that's what's getting ready to go down. So, look at uh, Romans, the third chapter. Look at uh, Romans 3 and 19. It says, now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before the most high. So, whatsoever the law said, it said to them who are under the law. So, who was the law given to? Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Book of Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Who is the law given to? Let's find out. Because, you know, people be trying to include everybody in reading the Bible and saying it's talking to everyone. The most I just identified themselves as the power of Israel. So who do you get a law to? Psalms 147, 19 and 20. He showed his word unto Jacob. Jacob is our forefather. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His statutes and his judgment unto Israel. That's the Israelites. He have not dealt so with any nation. That's clear. He have not given his law, statutes, commandments to any other nation. And as for his judgments, the judgment is what? The punishment for breaking the laws. They have not known them. Praise ye the most high. So the other nations have not known the judgment. But they're going to know the judgment we just read about in Second Peter 3 and 10. Oh yeah, everybody going to know about it then. That's the ultimate judgment. For those that live today. So, uh, 
I believe for uh, feeling guilty or feeling, you know, guilt, it's because of uh, conviction of sin, you know, spiritually, I believe. So let's look at that because that's very important too. Because you can be, um, like I said, you, you can destroy yourself with no faith and come with your own understanding of what's right and wrong when you uh, don't look at what the scripture saying and have a faith in the most high. I mean... You got you go. You got many examples. We have many examples besides us to look at, to know. A whole lot of us was convicted. Was was felt guilty. Felt felt that guilt. And convicted of sin in their life. Conviction in the Zion Van Compact Bible Dictionary to convince. Or prove guilty. Although the word conviction is never used in the King James Version Bible, both testaments give many illustrations of the experience. In the Old Testament, one of the most notable is found in Psalm 51, where David, realizing he has sinned against the Most High, is overwhelmed with sorrow for his transgression. That's that's repentance. Sorrow. He's overwhelmed with sorrow for his transgression. And cries out to the most high for forgiveness. See? That's repentance. And cleansing. It says in the New Testament, the central passage bearing on this theme is John 16. 7 to 9. So let's look at John 16, 7 to 9. See if they're on point. St. John 16, 7 through 9. St. John 16. It says, um, St. John 16 and 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, which is contrary to being a lie. It is expedient for you that I go away. So my shake up a shot, tell him, I got to go away. Where if I go not away, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, Spirit of truth, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Right? It says, verse 8, And when he is come, which is the comforter of the Holy Spirit, he will reprove the world for what? Reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and judgment. See? Of sin because they believe not on me. You know? Of sin because they believe not on me, meaning that's the sin is what the transgression of the Most High's law. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the Prince of this world is judged, the devil gonna be judged. He said, "I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now." See, they wasn't able to bear the things that he would tell them. Before they receive the Holy Spirit, like some people now, they're not able to bear the things that are really deep in the spirit, certain mysteries, because they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what he said, how be it when he, not she, but when he, because people say that the Holy Spirit is a girl, a woman, how be it when he, he identified him as a he already twice. He go the third time. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of Truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
For he, not she, but he shall not speak of himself, himself, not herself, but himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. You see? He I'm shall joking. glorify he shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take a mine and shall show it unto you. See? So they wasn't able to receive deep spiritual knowledge until they received the Holy Spirit. He told him, he said, hey, I have, verse 8, 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Like now, it's a lot of things that could be said to people, but they're not ready to bear it. Because their mind's not ready to receive deep spiritual understanding. And they didn't, they wasn't. One, real, real quick, prove it. Go to Acts 1. My second side died, rose on the third day, walked the earth for 40 days. This is what they asked me. They hadn't received the Holy Spirit yet. That's why I told them, I got many things to say, but you ain't able to receive it because you ain't, they wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit. Look, Acts 1 and 6. Like a lot of our people are today. When they were therefore come together, I them died, rose on the third day, walked away for 40 days. When they therefore would come together, they asked of him, saying, Mashiach, I was shot. Would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now you tell me. Was they in the spirit? <laughs> Look what he said. And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. The Most High put it, when he's going to bring the kingdom to Israel in his own power. Only the Most High know. Don't let nobody tell you, my shaka was shy, coming back, he going to be here this day, the end of the world is this day. Only the Most High know. But you shall receive power. That's, listen, that's spiritual power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Then you know they ain't have it. You just told them, I got many things to tell you, but you ain't able to bear it because you don't have the Spirit. But like a lot of people out there, they don't have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to be able to receive this and understand this because they're not ready. And some are. But you shall receive power, that spiritual power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be... Witnesses are to me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the utmost parts of the earth. Because he told them they couldn't go to the Samaritans or to the Gentiles. They were not ready. I mean, look, you hear what they just said. And we know as Israelites, we hadn't went through Deuteronomy 28 chapter. And curses from 15 to 68 as of yet. You know, and we hadn't even, we hadn't even fulfilled what he said. In Luke 21 and 20, when you see the cities compassed with armies. Though the time of desolation is near and flee into the mountains, we're fleeing to Africa and other countries that they fled into. Fleeing from what? Wrong.